In 2001, when Dr. Jonathan Reed came forward with his evidence, people were kind of confused. Is this guy for real? And after looking at some of his stuff, uh, some people kind of got on board with him and agreed that he may have had an encounter with an alien. But after looking at the footage a little closer, which we are right now, we're kind of figuring it out that this could be just one of the biggest hoaxes that we've seen in a long time. This guy claims he was walking his dog, came across an alien that had, well, his dog ran out, ran away from him, and he hears yelping and whatnot. And by the time he gets to where the dog is, he sees an alien grabbing his dog by the snout, by the bottom half of his jaw, or his jaw, and ripping him apart like the King Kong lizard split, you know, just taking it and ripping it. That to me is a little bit excessive and extreme, but the dog disappeared, he said. Just turned to ash and it was gone. That's why there's no evidence of his cute little dog. He claims the alien actually grabbed the dog and flipped it from side to side and killed it, unfortunately. Such a sad thing, but we are looking at the video and we don't see any evidence of any sort of blood or a piece of the dog anywhere. You got a feel for the guy. He gives a great performance. It seems that, you know, I've lost dogs that have uh, grown up with all their lives and unfortunately they pass away and it's a very sad thing to deal with. And you could hear in his voice, he seems very, um, you know, troubled by what he just experienced. Apparently this alien killed his dog and he's in a panic and he could feel his sorrow. Uh, it's a good performance, uh, pretty much capable of winning an Academy Award in my opinion. Uh, other than him maybe not acting that this is possibly real. That's what's kind of intriguing about this case. And when you look at this uh, object in the forest as it hovers, or is it hovering, It definitely is it CGI in my opinion. This is definitely something practical, something there, whether it's an illusion of suspended wires that we're not seeing uh, elevating this uh, object, it's hard to tell. We're not seeing any evidence of that, but it is again compelling to say the least. The infamous Dr. Jonathan Reed story um, of the alien encounter, alien killing, uh, the death of a dog, and lots of lots of evidence. Um, this story has been refuted by many, uh, attempted to be debunked, but something about it keeps me intrigued. I, I know that something like this could have been faked, but by one specific individual, he said the alien started vibrating, shaking so much, like uh, a paint can at the Home Depot in one of the shakers. He said it, it, was, it made itself blurry for whatever reason, but he hit it with this branch, uh, hits it in the back of the head. You can see when the, you know, the alien falls to the ground, you can see it blinking when he's uh, touching it, moving it around, showing us, because he's documenting everything. He had his camera with him and he decided to document it. So he uh, was scanning the area and uh, he come, come across this UFO spaceship obelisk thing. Uh, it, it looked like a real stealthy type of uh, UFO, kind of like triangle shaped, uh, like an arrow almost. And it looked like it was hovering without skill sets in film production or special effects, it's pretty good. Some say that the body that is wrapped is possibly paper mache. That I will have to say no. He, he wraps the alien up. The alien he thinks is unconscious or dead. He's not sure, but he wraps it up in, in some stuff like a burrito in this foil, whatever he had with it. Takes it back home, can't sleep, Take, puts the alien in the freezer to, to you know keep it fresh but he couldn't sleep so he he gets the alien out of the freezer and documents like an alien autopsy video and he's getting puts his finger in the eye for whatever reason and he's looking at the wound you know and he's got the camera and all this 
Um, it looked, when I first saw this years ago, and that's why nobody's talking about it anymore, because people think it's been debunked. Well, there's a lot of holes in the story. Um, a lot of holes. And one of them is there's no evidence, you know? Everybody's asking, where the heck is this alien body now? Shouldn't we have this in a museum or something? Well, he comes up with a story that's quite interesting and obviously cliche, in my opinion, of where this alien body is right now. He says in the middle of the night, he was ransacked by some unknown uh, force of engagement from a uh, faction of government that we're not aware of. And they came in, raided the place and stole the body. So that's why the alien body doesn't uh, exist in his possession right now. And that's a pretty, again, cliche um, story to come up with that, oh, his house was raided and all of a sudden the body's gone. We're taking a look at it again and there's a lot of compelling things to it and then there's some things that kind of gives a dead giveaway as screaming a hoax. The way he's moving the head from left to right in the kitchen, it seems like the head's not even connected to the body. I, I find that a little strange. It seems a little stiff and some might say it's paper mache. And again, we don't know, we weren't there. The fact that in the video you see the eye blinking and you see the pupil of the eye uh, squashes any theory that this is a fake animatronic device. I'm not saying that that's not possible, but it's just too expensive. So the question I want to ask on this story is why? And again, when he brings this thing back home, what compels him? To, shouldn't he have gone to the authorities and maybe say, hey, hey guys, look what I just got. And it'd be more of a way to prove his legitimacy and what's really going on here. Dr. Uh, Jonathan Reed, if he did this, to hoax everybody, we're not seeing any kind of benefit on his part. I, if I'm not mistaken, he hasn't tried to sell any books or uh, movie rights. He's just uh, putting it out there. And apparently he hasn't made one single penny off any of these videos that have uh, garnished millions and millions of views around the world on YouTube and on other social media platforms. I just, I, I don't believe it's fake. If the eye had been blinking and the pupil and all that, I would have had strong doubt. Um, but no, with the blinking of the eye, that has me thinking there's some legitimacy to this. Now, as we see in other videos, as his uh, notoriety gained, there was an interview where he's on TV and he puts on the, the bracelet that he found uh, at the encounter site. Found in the forest in 1996 when I first encountered the creature or the alien. The guy did a little scan and he found supposedly uh, a bracelet that can, that has three prongs in it that go into your arm, you know clamps on and it uh you know and it takes over and he says there's pain at first because of the three needles going into your arm and then it goes away and it gets cool and then you know you feel the coolness from inside and it spreads outwards towards your extremities and he disappears they make the decision ah. Ah. whether ah. video camera starts to uh, glitch and then he s s suspect no, that's the word I'm looking for supposedly uh, vanishes in front of a live audience now up until that point I feel there is a very strong case that there's legitimacy to this now did dr. Jonathan Reed did he try to ride the coattails to this little 15 minutes of fame too hard to where he went over the top with this whole disappearing act. Um, or is it legit?
it seems to me that he tried to do something that basically destroyed his career. Why would he do this after all the great evidence he had before and to do this stunt where he puts on the bracelet and disappears in front of the audience and they actually put audio enhancements like fake clapping and uh, shock and off from the crowd when in reality I think it was done in a studio pretty much by himself and try to make it look like that he did it in front of a live audience which is a uh, insane but you know i think that was pretty much the last straw for uh, people that followed dr jonathan reed after they saw this video on camera and then he came back like a minute later it was amazing people were clapping bull crap <laughs> all right there was no crowd watching this happen that was post edit uh, probably YouTube cheering, you know, how they give you the free audio stuff. That's what it sounded like. It was totally fake. Uh, you can see where there was an edit to make uh, it look like he disappeared. And when he came back, you can see the same type of heavy, heavy static, you know, and you can see the change. It, it's just, it's made well, but there's very, there's a lot of mistakes. I can't even speak. Um, I don't, uh, you know, you asked me if I thought this guy was legitimate or did he fake, you know, everything. Uh, I'm going to have to say, yeah, I think the guy's full of it. Um, I can't find anything on him now uh, that's current. His website is under construction. It's been that way for a long time, supposedly. Anything I could find on him, on him is old, so nothing new. Um, I don't know if anybody else who's working on this project for third phase of Moon found anything new, but I, I didn't. And, you know, just like I thought when I originally saw this years ago, uh, it looks good, but it's bad. And there's a lot of problems with the story. Uh, even though the guy seems sincere, he had a long time to practice that story. He's been telling it forever. Yeah, it's been kind of interesting right here at Third Phase of Moon. We kind of came up with a, a kind of concept on going over these old case files backing up to the 1980s and even the late 90s. And Jonathan Reed, he kind of came up. He's an obvious choice to go over this old case file right now. And we're taking a look at it again. And there's a lot of compelling things to it. And then there's some things that kind of gives a dead giveaway as screaming a hoax. Again, right here at Third Phase of Moon, we're just going over the facts and kind of giving our best judgment on what's really going on here. But I think the best way to solve this mystery is to get Dr. Jonathan Reed right here at Third Phase of Moon. So if you're watching this video right now, Dr. Jonathan Reed, reach out to us right now at Third Phase of Moon. I, I have tried to uh, track him down to contact him myself. Unfortunately, to no prevail, he seems to be kind of staying out of sight so until we could actually speak with him personally we can't really say exactly whether it's real or not i'm leaning towards the encounter as a real encounter but later in his notoriety i think it might have gotten blown up uh, a little bit kind of writing that story not sure though but i i ask these questions if he's not making money doing this, then why is he spending all of the money designing, building, creating special effects by himself, mind you? Going out and videotaping it, um, passing off the death of a, of a dog, which for me was a was a uh, an emotional connection with the story years and years ago when it came out, because uh, I'm, I'm an animal lover, so immediately I, I I remember this story. Now, uh, the video or the audio of the creature making all the noise while it's like a burrito in the refrigerator, the, the, the meat locker, uh, was some spooky stuff. I felt like I had to try to document this. Of course, so I took a camera and I took the recorder and I turned it on and I again opened the freezer, and that's when I recorded this sound. Would you uh, would you play the sound for us once again, please? Yes, I will. Hold on. Okay, here, here it comes. <laughs> now, 
Now, for someone to put all this together, you have to be really good in special effects, camera, editing, to, to give it that electronic glitch effect, all these things. I don't see Mr. Reed being that individual. I just don't. I do have my doubts. I do have my doubts. But I don't see the encounter as being an unreal event. I think something may have happened um, with with evidence, video, uh, the, the alien on camera, the ship close up. It's too compelling to, to dismiss. 